Welcome to Taya Talk. I am David Strickle, creator of the Taya Mindset Practice. And I want to share today why belief systems matter, why they're so important. The Taya practice is a quantum mindset practice, but really it's a belief system. It is a mindset practice that creates or develops a belief system within you. And we, we are aware of belief systems across humanity. Many of those uh, combined to form what I often refer to in here as the matrix. And very often we see things like religion or family traditions or traditions based on your race or uh, nationality and things like that, that are these beliefs and these commonly held ideas of what life is supposed to look like. But really, all of that is human creation. All of it is. And there are positive aspects to that. And there are certainly not so positive aspects to that, especially if you and your desired life journey uh, and, and just your nature doesn't allow you to fit neatly into that belief system that you were indoctrinated into as a child. This is why so many people have difficult childhoods because they are bringing their entire eternal being into projecting into a, a human scenario. This is what makes you a unique being uh, as a human being because you have that eternal part of you, that soul, whatever you want to call that, as a strand of consciousness and expression of source, you have that eternal part of you that projects into the physical vehicle and the physical vehicle develops the ego that allows you to overshadow a lot of that eternal wisdom so that you can have this sort of uh, from ground zero, if you will, human experience. So you're projecting into a set of beliefs just by aligning with your circumstances, your parents, your religion, your race, your nationality, the time that you choose to come, all of these things create a unique scenario for your consciousness to come here and expand in sophistication. And notice that the things that cause us to become more sophisticated beings very often are the challenges that we create for ourselves and experience. So simply projecting into a belief system uh, does not mean that we meant to be completely in alignment with that belief system. You're looking at that from a human perspective of judgment if you're thinking that way, because the soul is seeking the, the challenging experiences. The soul is seeking the contrast, if you will, wanting challenges, wanting things that are going to cause you to perhaps suffer but ultimately calls you to expand. And that expansion is really what the, the human experience or the physical experience is all about. So it's not about just projecting in into a scenario where you're going to fit neatly and never suffer and never feel any discord whatsoever and just move through an easy life journey. I know from an egocentric perspective, we very often think that, gosh, you know, we just want our life to be easy. We want to just have a life of ease and, and luxury and just calm. We don't want any drama. We want to have all of our needs met. We're these eternal beings. We should just come and live in abundance and nothing else. But nobody's experiencing that. No one, regardless of, of who is out teaching law of attraction, if they are pushing some idea of perfection, we know that no one's really experiencing that. And very often the people that are placing themselves out there as these perfect supreme you know, examples of humanity, we often find out that that's not true. We often find out that they are flawed like everyone else. Look at the clergy and everything that's happening in, in, in organized religion these days. We are finding there are plenty of flaws uh, across members of clergy, certainly. So there is no such thing as coming and just having this easy existence. Yes, some people manifest a, a certainly a more difficult path than others. We're always this spectrum of vibration, so we're this spectrum of experiences. But if we really look at belief systems and how we create our own individual belief system and how much our belief system creates our reality, in fact, it creates all of it. Some of it is a little more difficult to understand than other aspects of it, but really it's creating all of it. If you think about all of your beliefs and all of your thoughts, especially the subconscious mind, the things that are sort of running in the background all the time, 
how varied that is and then look at your life and, and think about, well, gosh, there's some good things and there's some bad things. And I, I notice that when I focus on the good stuff, I tend to get more of that. And when I focus on the bad stuff, I tend to get more of that. Well, that is your consciousness creating your reality. We have this term that gets used quite a bit, and I use it every once in a while, called the law of attraction, because it feels like we're magnets. It feels like we're attracting things to us. And I understand that because I definitely can feel that, especially in my interactions with other people uh, when I go out into the public, especially, and right away realizing that if I have kind of a weird interaction or a negative interaction, that's a vibrational check for me. If I haven't already thought about where my vibration is, which is pretty rare for me to do that at this point, uh, I will stop and realize, well, gosh, I'm not in a very high vibe place and I'm attracting these other people to me right now that are in the same lower vibration where I am. And I can change that instantaneously, which is great. But we're not attracting as much as we are consciously creating. It's hard to think that, gosh, that other person, uh, you know, just materialized for my benefit. That sounds, you know, very egocentric if you think about it. Uh, that, you know, that this person just materialized for my benefit, but actually they did. And it's, it's really a stretch for, for some people to wrap their mind around. So it's easier to say, well, gosh, they were, that person was in that lower vibrational state. I was in a lower vibrational state. So we were a match. So we interacted in traffic. We interacted in the supermarket. We interacted at work. We had a negative interaction. It's so it's okay to think about things in terms of attraction, but really we're consciously creating because there are other things that are going on in our lives that we are, it's not as easy to think about attraction. Like we don't attract cancer. Cancer doesn't just, you know, magnetize to us. Cancer is something that we create in our bodies and it has a lot to do with the toxins in our environment from a physical perspective. I understand that from a scientific perspective, but we are creating the conditions that allow something like that to take hold and allow it to, to manifest. So we are consciously creating via our thoughts and our thoughts are something that are very much rooted in our belief system. So we get what we believe. We get what we continually think about. That's our continual vibration. I call this our default vibration very often. So the default vibration is what we are vibrating, what we are projecting almost all the time. This is why I'm not a big fan of, uh, you know, daily affirmations and things like that. I would much rather work on my belief system to rewrite what's going on subconsciously for me rather than trying to fight or battle what's going on. If you think about it subconsciously 24 hours a day with some affirmations that I'm in that vibration of the affirmation for a few minutes a day, if that, if I even remember to do it. So I'm remembering to do the affirmation and yes, it's starting to, to, to loosen up the energy a little bit. I do believe that, but it's far more effective to completely, to, to systematically shift my belief system. That's where Taya came from. This awareness that I needed to change certain aspects of my belief system that were not serving my desires. So how do I change a belief system? Daily practice and examining old beliefs. Where did that belief come from? What is the origin of that? I know this belief, it's my belief. I can't just shake it off and, and, and stop it but I know it's not serving my desires and I know it's rooted somewhere. So that's why we go to the root. We go to the root of the belief. We start healing the root of the belief. We detune it via appreciation. We detune it via examining it and, and, and having our opinion switch to that of source, which is appreciation of all things. When you're aligned with source, source is healing expansive energy. So when you go into a transgressor, and that what, something that you have demonized probably your whole life and you start detuning by viewing that transgressor through the eyes of source, you are detuning it. It's, it's becoming no longer a transgressor. It's becoming something that you just experienced. And you realize that, well, source isn't judgmental. This is why we're having this mix of experiences here that aren't equal. They're not all the same. They're not all positive. If source is love and happiness, why aren't we just living in love and happiness? Why aren't we just living in utopia? Well, that's because we're in this contrasting environment because we want to expand our consciousness in the having of experiences 
both positive and negative, and the overcoming of unwanted experiences. That inspires new creation. So when we start thinking in terms of that, we have to realize that, gosh, our belief system was completely constructed in a human-created matrix that by and large runs on fear and judgment. No wonder the world is experiencing anxiety. No wonder the world is holding itself away from true abundance. No wonder most people aren't living in joy. But when you start making joy your daily business, you look around you and realize there's lots of things to be joyful about. Why are people so triggered? Why are they so angry? Why are they so unhappy? Because they're operating in a matrix that says you're a victim, that nothing is your fault, that the other people are the reason that you're not wealthy, that you're not healthy, that you're not in a great relationship. It's someone else's fault. It's not you. It's very disempowering. The matrix is very disempowering. <clears throat> there is certainly a mindset out there of victimization. There's a mindset out there uh, that is heavily promoted in the matrix of consumerism. Have more things, and, and that's what happiness is. And then you manifest and you have more things. And you realize, gosh, I'm still not happy. I have all the stuff that was supposed to make me happy and I'm still not. Why is that? Because consumerism is a belief system. Just like believing that politics is going to, to be the deciding factor on your joy, clarity, and abundance. That's why we see all these people arguing over politics. They are turning their power over to the government, saying the government mandating uh, you know, the lifestyle that I agree with, uh, the government, uh, you know, shutting down things that I don't like or don't agree with the government promoting, uh, healthcare. Um, you know, these are the things that I need for joy, clarity, and abundance. I need the government to pay for my healthcare. I need lower taxes so that I can be abundant. I need to, um, you know, make sure that, uh, there's a program in place to protect me when I'm old because I'm terrified of growing old. That's a matrix belief system. Look how much fear is woven into all of that stuff. And then when we let go of all of the fear, we actually allow nat our natural state of abundance just to flow. So belief system is very, very, very important. You have one. You always have one. Everyone has one. It creates your life. It creates everyone's life. It creates everyone's reality. And understanding that you are the creator of your belief system and understanding what is universal law and what is the matrix. Those are huge life-changing realizations that not many people have discovered yet. And certainly there are people working toward that, but going deeper and deeper and deeper into it, realizing that the law of attraction is sort of, I, I called it, uh, gosh, I forgot where I was. I think I was on a podcast yesterday. I called it a gateway. It's like a gateway drug. It's a great gateway into deeper thinking realizing that step one is, you know, I, I create my own, own reality, law of attraction 101. Okay, this is great. But notice how law of attraction gets swept back into the matrix with all of its consumerist uh, rhetoric. You know, how many times have you watched a law of attraction video that's about manifesting more money and affirmations for more money? And I want to have this new shiny thing. Again, the, the stream source is not judging anything, so you can have that experience without judgment. But I can tell you that I created that experience where I manifested more, ended up with everything that I thought I needed to be happy, and, and came to the solid realization that this ain't it. This is not happiness. You know, the, the stuff was nice. I appreciated it. I still do. But it's not real joy. Joy is the clarity of source. That is the clarity of source. We talk about joy, clarity, and abundance. Those three things actually go hand in hand because when you are a joyful being and you're no longer in that thirsty state of need because you think you need something external to, to make you whole or to make you happy, you no longer need that. So you're no longer pushing that stuff away because you really don't care anymore. I'm a joyful being with or without the stuff. And then that loosens up the energy and allows the stuff to actually show up. So if the stuff's not showing up, usually it's because you've activated the vibration of need. And the signal that you're sending is, I need it because it's not here. And the universe is saying, yes, you need it because it's not there. And you stay in that perpetual loop 
of pushing things away that you really want. Or you start to manifest something and then you say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm finally manifesting this thing. I've wanted it for so long. I better really think about it now. And then what do you do? Boom, you flip that switch on of need. You went from being in alignment with receiving, I am that thing, to once again needing, oh gosh, it's got to come now. I need that thing. And the universe just takes it right back and says, you're right, you need it. We're putting you right back into that, that place of need. And I think that because a lot of us were indoctrinated into religion where we were taught that there was this, this deity that was going to deliver abundance to us if we were worthy of it and we needed to obey a set of rules to be worthy of it, we feel like the universe owes us something. That the, that the universe is not fair, that the universe, uh, sometimes we get angry at, at the concept of God or the universe because we're not receiving the things that we want to experience. And why can't you just give me this? I'm so worthy of this. And you know, this person seems to have everything and I feel like I have nothing. It's not fair. Well, the universe is not fair. Understanding universal law, one of those two components that I just mentioned, understanding that the universe is not about fairness, obviously. And the, the universe is just delivering on whatever vibration we're choosing to experience. In our, in our eternal state of consciousness, we appreciate that very deeply because it's the human experience that we chose to come here and have. But when we're in our physical vehicle, when we're operating from our ego perspective, we don't have that knowledge. That gives us this opportunity to create our way out of the matrix which is a massive expansion for all of us that are choosing this path out of it. Massive. Think of how much more sophisticated a being you are when you are no longer triggered by the matrix. When you're no longer controlled by it. You understand that universal law is very simple. All creation occurs via consciousness. Period. And all consciousness is affected by polarity. So your consciousness is not just a static consciousness. That's it. That's universal law. Your abundance is guaranteed. In fact, you right now are experiencing the exact level of abundance that you believe. You believe. And think about this. You may feel poor. You may feel broke. You may feel sick or alone. But there are other people in the world that are much worse off than you are on any and all of those topics. And you know that. There are people that are suffering more, struggling more, more alone, more triggered by their loneliness, more uh, in ill health, more in poverty. Whatever, whatever it is that you're not receiving that you want, there's someone else that's got it much worse than you. Why is that? Because your belief system has allowed you to manifest a certain level. In fact, most of you that are partaking in teaching such as this are not in crisis. Because if you're, of course, this would be the answer to a crisis, but someone that's operating in crisis is operating at such a low vibration that this type of clarity, they're not even anywhere near ready for it. And we would like to think, well, gosh, you know, just go take all of the homeless people and teach them Taya and they're not going to be homeless anymore. That might work for some of them, but for the most part, they're nowhere near the vicinity of readiness for this type of self-actualization. You know, this happens much higher on the vibrational spiral. Uh, you've got to do some work to get to the level to where you can begin to comprehend what we're teaching here. And again, I know that that sounds unfair, but the universe is not fair. And I would love for anybody and everyone on the planet to hear these words always. <clears throat> I love to teach Taya all over the place. I would love for it to help all of humanity. But I'm also very, very aware that most of humanity is simply not in a place of readiness for this. Because they're not yet ready to accept that they are creating their reality and that their reality is impacted by polarity. And that is universal law. And everything other than that is the matrix. They're not ready because they're, they're, they're hooked on parts of the matrix. I am homeless because I was a victim because, you know, my parents abused me or I was, you know, was told that I wasn't good enough or, you know, I had this bad set of circumstances or I got really sick and I had all these bills and I didn't know what to do and I couldn't work. Suddenly I was getting evicted and I just didn't know what to do. 
and I was operating in fear. You know, you, you, these are the mindsets that are out there that they are sort of a, they always have a reason why. Uh, I used to work with uh, a lot of commission salespeople. <clears throat> and if you want to talk about a career field where your daily performance is very evident and shows up in your paycheck or not, you know, wh wherever you are is, is going to dictate vibrationally is really going to dictate your, your, your monthly income. And I would meet with people to talk to them about being more successful. And the successful people were always the ones who took complete responsibility for their success. And they wanted to figure out how to be better at what they were doing. And the people that weren't successful almost every single time would sit and tell me why they weren't successful. And it never had anything to do with them. The boss doesn't like me. We're not getting any good traffic. Nobody wants to buy. The economy is bad. And they couldn't explain why all of those negative things were happening to them. And the person sitting across from them was earning, you know, 10 times as much and we're in the same scenario, same boss, same traffic, same customers. Well, they get all the good customers. They get all the, so they just happen to get all the good customers walking through the door. They could never really, it wasn't rational at all. It was just emotional. This is so much more rational than the matrix. The matrix is highly emotional. It's funny how people think that we that are into this spirituality stuff or law of attraction or just plain old Taya, that we're all these kooks, you know, we're these religious or these spiritual kooks and we're these weird people and we just need to be realists and get into 3D where they are. But if you think about it, 3D runs highly on emotion, highly on emotion. We understand emotion, but we don't operate on emotion. We operate on something that's actually very logical, that, that consciousness creates. Even science understands that. Uh, physicians understand that. They understand the placebo effect. They understand on, on a certain level that our consciousness is absolutely creating our reality, at least to a point. We believe, I know, that our consciousness is creating 100% of our reality experience, all of it. And that that, that fluctuation in vibration is a component that was created to create the expansion of the universe. Because if we were consciously creating and we were always simply creating the same thing, because we, we weren't uh, static, we were static, we were not vibrationally uh, on, on any kind of vibrational fluctuation at all, then we would just be creating the same thing over and over and over again. We expand because we create new. We're expansive beings by nature. This is why we naturally want to solve things. We naturally want to fix things. We naturally want to do better and be better. But the, the contrast of our world is very interesting that we're in this, this mindset of expansion. We want to do more. We want to improve. We want to make something better. We want to create something new. And while we're in this creative process, we are creating and ultimately destroying our own physical vehicle in the process of doing that, in the aging process, we are consciously aging out of the environment. What a brilliant design this universe is that we consciously create our physical point of entry and we consciously create our exit. That shows you that there's no such thing as positive and negative. There's nothing negative about aging out of the environment. It was by design that we do that. The matrix tells us that it's negative. The matrix says old is bad. Aging is something that you need to fear. Uh, you, I don't know if you've seen the news this week, but Martha Stewart at 81 is on the cover of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. And I love it. I think it's great that she's doing that at 81 years old. And the negative comments around that are hysterical. She's too old. This isn't great. This isn't what we want. Oh, she's only on there because she's rich and she can afford plastic surgery. Uh, you know, the matrix is just full of these, these contrasts uh, of, of these messages that, uh, you know, the, the human experience is flawed and that you age out of it and that you die. But why? It's just a part of a belief system that we've been taught by other people that aging and dying is a bad thing. So there's one thing to, to have a belief system that is completely created by the matrix and you feel a victim of, and it's something very, very different to take ownership of that and start reshaping your belief system 
understanding that the universe is not judgmental, that this fluctuation of vibration is not a bad thing, that going down your spiral, having a spin out, having your imperfect human journey, uh, experiencing life however you wish to experience it, that's all your own doing in your own creation. And all of it offers expansion. The expansion of consciousness is available in moving through any and all experiences, period. Spin outs especially. I have found that my spin outs, my lower vibrational uh, periods uh, of existence, and I do manifest them fairly regularly, they all serve the purpose of leveling me up to a new height of clarity, a new level of joy in that clarity. And then the abundance is the last thing on my mind from all of that. It just happens. But I do notice how often the matrix weaves in its little fear-based, uh, fear-based little tentacles that, that seek to grab you and pull you back into it, especially around things like money and health. There's so many of those out there. There's so many. And when I recognize it, I think it's hilarious. When I feel triggered about money, which I don't much anymore at all, but, but when I do feel triggered, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm an abundant being. I know that I am. How many times have I been at that cliff of, oh my gosh, there's no more. This is it. I'm broke. I'm completely at the edge here. I've got nothing. And then found myself in abundance yet again. Always in well-being. Because my belief system supports that. But it took time for, to build that. Because the matrix certainly didn't support that. The matrix does not support automatic well-being because there's no profit in it. There's no profit for someone else. to. There, there's no way for them to control your behavior or profit from your being. We all know that, that, that people at the top of the abundance pyramid very often uh, do appreciate the entire pyramid, including the criminals that fill up the for-profit prison systems, including the uh, people that are going to go and die in foreign wars because they believe that fighting for their country is a noble cause, even though that's just another aspect of the matrix. But they appreciate it. It takes all of these people to drive commerce. And the more people we have, the more commerce we have. We grow the economy by growing the population, period. So that's why there's a mindset at the top of the, of the pyramid that no matter what, more people are a better thing. But we're expansive beings. So we're expanding our abundance no matter what. No matter what. We are expanding regardless. Now, where you are in your experience of that expansion, where you are in that pyramid is completely up to you. But your belief system is the thing that's going to place you where you are in the pyramid every single time. Every single time. And there are people that are steeped in certain belief systems, religions, that are doing fairly well in the pyramid. There are people that are healthy and wealthy and living a, a rather joyful life that are in the religion pyramid, the, the religion mindset, but they're not at the bottom of the pyramid. There's not necessarily suffering there. Now, I don't think there's nearly as much clarity in that because you're listening to someone else tell you what your truth is and what your clarity is and probably abiding by a set of rules or at least pretending to, to fit into that matrix. So what we've done with Taya and what I intend to continue to do with it is realize that, gosh, religion's onto something. That's why it's worked so well. That sense of community and, and the, the commonly shared beliefs and all of that stuff, we love that. We're a collective consciousness. We love the community. What we don't love are the rules that are limiting and judgmental. Uh, we don't love the, um, you know, the, the, the hypocrisy that is very often woven into that stuff. We don't love the idea of, of worshiping this deity in the sky that we don't feel is really seeking to be worshiped or even obeyed. You know, that those are all just concepts uh, created in that religion matrix to grow the matrix, to get more people into it. But they are offering something to the congregation. They're offering, here's a framework from which you can live your life. But our framework is more stripped of the rules and stripped down to universal law. 
Consciousness is creating your reality and your consciousness is continually impacted by polarity. That's it. And it's not bad. There's nothing bad about polarity. There's nothing bad about going down your spiral. There's nothing bad about having a spin out. It's the experience you're having, period. That's what this framework is. And it gives you the leeway to discern your preferences. What are your preferences? Source does not have a preference for you. I know a lot of people, uh, they, they, they leave religion and they get into spirituality. And we're talking a lot lately about how religion is on the decline and spirituality is on the, the upswing. And they want to bring a lot of that old religious baggage into spirituality. What does source think of this? What does source want me to do? Does the stream approve of me being gay? Does the stream approve of uh, wanting to have lots of money? Does the stream approve of X, Y, Z? And the stream loves all experiences because the stream is my channeling of source. Source doesn't have an opinion of exactly what we should do. The, the, the framework delivered by source of what we call Taya gives you everything that you need to go inward. But we're very, we're so taught not to go inward. We're so taught to look externally for guidance and, you know, what's my truth? What's my life path? And, uh, you know, I saw some numerology stuff the other day where, you know, this is your number. So this is your path. Really? So someone other than you and your human consciousness, who's making all the decisions here is determining what your life path is supposed to be. But it's, it's, it's how we're really indoctrinated into the world, especially if we come into religion. Looking outside ourselves for guidance, my spirit guides, the ascended masters, the aliens that I'm talking to, the, my angel guides, all of these terms that we hear are really people saying that they are looking outside themselves to source for guidance in a specific way. But I can tell you that source doesn't have that sort of opinion. So if you are raising your vibration and you are discerning a preference, then you are in a high vibration, clarity, source-driven state, and you're probably going to be in a, in a much better position to make a decision up there, but you're still employing your ego because your ego is the discerner of preference, and that is separate from source. But ego in alignment with source, you're a pretty powerful uh, decision maker up there. You will make better decisions from that high vibration of, I know that my well-being is guaranteed and I cannot possibly in that state make a wrong decision. Because whatever decision you make, whatever choice you make, you're going to manifest or create from that higher vibration appreciation of all that is state of mind. So your ego is more is highly functioning when you're up your spiral. When you're down your spiral, your ego is going to lead you to more fear-based, um, you know, types of manifestation, which is going to lead you into more unwanted scenarios. Yes, by design. But those unwanted scenarios give you an opportunity to expand your being in the having of them. So it's a win-win no matter what. And that's what Taya is all about. Understanding that you're not ever going to go wrong. You're not going to get it wrong. You are always going to create expansion of consciousness in every experience, whether it is something that you move right into and really celebrate and enjoy or something that you move right into and discern is not your preference. And really that's all it has to be. You don't have to have the suffering experience at all because the true suffering in an unwanted experience is not in the experience itself. It's in the judgment of it. So it's completely up to you how you experience your spin outs and how you experience your lower vibrational periods. They're still going to come. You can raise your default vibration and go higher and higher and higher. But just like those financial markets and those other things that we measure that we talk about, you're going up and down, but you're steadily going up as you go up and down. That's the name of the game. That's the name of the game is becoming more at peace with what you're manifesting, less fearful of your spin outs in your low vibration period, continually detuning fear and judgment, allowing that vibration to go higher and higher and higher, understanding that you are an abundant being, that you are cared for by the universe, and that all of your needs and even your desires will be met when you let go and just trust. So that's the Taya religion, quote unquote. Uh, we don't call it a religion for many, many reasons, but it is a belief system. 
It absolutely is a belief system. And it's one that if you employ it continually, you will continue to pay yourself dividends. You will continually see ever increasing levels of joy, clarity, and abundance. That's the name of the game here. That's what we're all looking for. And I love sharing about all this. So make sure you uh, put your comments in, uh, especially in Patreon, so we can continue the conversation. And uh, if you have questions about any of this, just ask them. I'm always checking. Uh, and of course, you can always email david at the stream of and, and we will uh, answer anything that is really troubling you. Thank you so much for watching.